Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be trying to show you how to fix the PyCharm import error. Now I say trying to because there's tons of different reasons why this might be breaking, but I'm going to be showing you the most common reasons in this video. So please, please, please be patient and actually watch through the entirety of this video. I guarantee if you're here, you've probably been searching the internet for multiple hours and all you have to do is actually sit down, stay focused for 10 minutes or however long this video is going to be. And I promise I'm going to try my best to show you all the different reasons why this might not be working so please don't skip through this just sit and watch and if i don't show your common error it's probably coming later in the video all right so let's go ahead and get started so you've opened up pycharm you've tried to run your program and you get module not found can't import module whatever it is import error what we're going to do now is go through how to fix this. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our command prompt and make sure that we've actually installed this module. So we'll quickly just to test that this module is actually installed. What we're going to do is type pip install and then the name of the module. So in this case, I'm trying to import Pygame and maybe that's the one that I'm getting an error with. So I'm going to do pip install Pygame and see if that is installed or not. If it says requirement already satisfied, you've installed it. But we want to do one other thing as well to make sure that we've installed this in the correct Python version, which is type pip3 install and then the name of the module as well. Now, if one of these commands fails, don't stress out about it, but just try both pip and pip3 and now try to import your module again. And this might have fixed the problem for you. Now, I'm assuming you guys have probably already tried this and this hasn't worked. Now, what this means is you have more than one Python version on your machine. And when you're typing pip, you're not installing it into the Python version that you're using in PyCharm. So I'm going to show you how we can fix that. Now, just quickly, if pip did not work for you and this command did not work, what you need to do is click on the card that I'm going to leave in the top right hand corner, which is going to say how to install Pygame. Now, I know this is not probably like here, like, well, Pygame is not the module I want. It tells you how to fix this pip command. So go through that and then come back to this video if it's still not working. All right. So now what we're going to do is figure out what's going on here and how many versions of Python we have why this isn't working in PyCharm. Now, keep in mind when I say different versions, I'm also talking about virtual environments. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our programs tab on Windows. And again, this is kind of a Windows based tutorial. What we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to look for Python. So if I can go find P and here it is. So I see that right now I have one version of Python and it says Python 3.7. Now, if you have more than one version, this is an immediate red flag that First of all, you probably don't need all those versions. So go ahead and uninstall, uninstall the ones you don't need. But that means you're probably using the wrong one inside of PyCharm. So just keep in mind what ones you have there and what is the most recent version of the version you want to be using, because that's going to be important for the rest of the tutorial. Now, if you have Anaconda and IDLE, those count as different versions. All right. And if you have just different versions of IDLE, again, different versions. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is figure out what version of Python we actually install these packages into. Now, when you install Python, what ends up happening is you add some commands to your path, which allows you to type, well, Python in this console. So what you're going to do is go ahead and type Python and see what version comes up. Now, if you get a version that starts with a two, what you're going to do is you're going to type quit to get out of this console and try typing Python three. OK, if Python three doesn't work, that's fine. That means you only have Python two installed. But if Python three does work, that means you have a version of Python two as well as a version of Python three. So we're going to go ahead and type Python and keep track of what version this is. So in this case, mine is three point seven point two. And this is this means when you type pip or you type pip three, what's happening is you're installing those packages into Python version whatever it is that you saw in this case, 3.7.2. And that's the version of Python that we want to be using from inside of PyCharm. So now time to go to PyCharm and pick this version of Python. So what we're going to do, and there's different ways to do this is try, first of all, modifying our configurations, which is um, how I'm assuming you're running this. If you're not, don't worry, I'm showing another method in a second. We're going to go to edit configurations and we're going to select our Python interpreter here. Now, if you see a bunch of different interpreters and you realize right away that you're not using that version that you saw from the terminal, go ahead and select the correct version. So in this case, I need to be using Python 3.7. So I'm going to select Python 3.7. 
but if for some reason you don't have any interpreters there or you don't see the version, hold tight for one second and I'm going to show you how we can get to it. So I'm going to select that now, but if we don't see that, what we're going to do is go to File, Settings, and then go to Project, and then Project Interpreter. Now, you may see a list of interpreters here. It might say 3.6, 3.7, whatever it is. Again, if you see them here, select the correct version. So in this case, Python 3.7, go ahead, hit Apply. You should be good to go to run your code. You might have to change the configuration option to be that interpreter as well. Now, if you don't see these here, what you're going to do is go to this gear icon and click on add. And now we're going to add this Python interpreter to our project. And here's where we go into a few little side branches, because uh, this will be a little bit different depending on what versions you have and if you're using Anaconda or not. So if you're using a regular Python virtual environment by just typing virtual env or what that's how you've set it up, you're going to go to existing environment and you're going to select that environment on your computer. It's going to be dependent on where you saved it. So you're going to have to find that and select that environment and select the Python interpreter. Now, if you're using a Conda environment, what we're going to do is go to existing environment. We're going to click on these three dots. If you don't see the environment you're using already, which you probably won't. And we're going to find the Conda environment that we're using. So I'm going to go to C drive here. I'm going to go to uh, users and Timot, and this is just my user. This will be where your default Anaconda is installed because that's where what we're looking for right now. I'm going to scroll down until I find Anaconda 3, and what I'm going to do now is go into ENVs. Now, inside of here, you should see a list of the virtual environments that you have if you have any. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select the virtual environment that we'd wish to use. So I assume you guys know how to use virtual environments if you've installed stuff into them. So select the correct one. We're going to go down and we're going to select Python w.exe. So let's say chatbot's the one I want to use. I'm going to go into chatbot. I'm going to select, select Python w.exe and then click OK. Now, if you're using Anaconda, but you did not create a virtual environment. So all you're doing is you have one version of Python. It's called Conda, it's called Anaconda. What you've probably done when you installed your packages in it is installed it into what's known as the base directory. Now the base directory can be found, or the interpreter for that, if you open up this Anaconda folder, you scroll down and you select Python w.exe. So don't go in the ENBs folder, just select Python w.exe. So if that's what you've done, go ahead, select OK, and then you should, again, be ready to go. PyCharm might take a second to reboot and get ready, to use that. All right, now last step. If you're not using virtual environments, you're not using Anaconda, what you're going to do now is select what's known as the system interpreter. So here, again, click this to see if your Python version shows up 3.7, 3.6, whatever it is that you need. If it doesn't, click on these three dots, go to C drive, and find the Python version that you're using. Now, this is going to determine. Uh, this is going to be determined on where you saved your Python version. I don't know the default install location, but it's really easy to look up. You could probably just Google Python default install location, go there, and again, select python.exe. And if there is one, a Python w.exe, then that will set the interpreter for your project, and you'll be able to use that version of Python from PyCharm. So once we've done that, we've selected our correct version. If this is still not working, I don't know what to tell you guys because these are the most common errors that I have. There's probably something actually wrong with the module or package that you're using if none of this has fixed it for you. So just quickly, last kind of steps here in case this again is still not working. You've gone through, you've selected your Python interpreter and you've configured it in here inside of this configuration tab. You've selected the correct one and then you've tried to run your program and it still doesn't work. I'd recommend first off restarting your computer and from there, you're going to have to consult Stack Overflow and see what else you can do, because these are the most common errors on why you get that PyCharm import error. So again, please don't freak out, freak out on me if this doesn't work for you guys. I've been trying my best to help people out. I get tons of comments every day. So hopefully this can help even a few of you just figure out that PyCharm import error. And if it did, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot and help me out. With that being said, I will see you guys in another video.